if somebody's at the point where they feel overwhelmed as a caregiver and um, feel like they need support, this is an important conversation that we're having because your company can offer support not only emotionally, but yes. also in the caregiving side of things. Your company helps people navigate the financial side of things as we well. Do. We try to fill those gaps in so that you're not caring for your loved one all by yourself. We want to do our best for our loved one, but we have to take care of ourselves. And Otherwise, there's nobody to take care of. That exactly. Yeah. And that is a very hard lesson to learn because you want to give and give and give and give. It's so easy to get burnout because when our loved ones require 24 hour care, it it's a lot and it's exhausting. It's a lonely road. You, you get so involved in the day to day caregiving that it feels like you're isolated. It feels like nobody understands. Well, there's people out there we do understand. Hey, it's Becky Pearson, and this month we are featuring information for caregivers. And so uh, we thought, what better person to have talk about that than Amber Corbin with Amonicare. And she is in a unique experience because not only has she been on the um, business side of caregiving, but also was thrown into a caregiving situation when her husband suffered a stroke. So. Thank you for joining me. Amber. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about um, your situation. You obviously weren't planning on being a caregiver. No, I wasn't, especially at this time in our lives. We had just become empty nesters and this was kind of our time, I guess, um, if you want to look at it that way. Um, and September 11th of 2019, my husband suffered a massive stroke. Um, very lucky to even still have him. Uh, it was touch and go for a while, um, but he survived, thank goodness. But our lives changed forever. Um, we went through, you know, a nine day ICU stay where he was in a, an induced coma. Then we went straight from ICU to a 30 day rehabilitate inpatient rehabilitation program at Kearney CHI Good Samaritan. They did a great job. They started the process of rehabilitation. It was kind of an intensive 30 day program. He would have three hours of physical therapy a day. He had two hours of speech therapy every day and two hours of occupational therapy every day. Mm -hmm. So it was a good start. But then when that 30 days was up, that's when I was I'll be honest, I didn't know where to go. And so I put out there on Facebook and was asking some nurse friends of mine. I said, okay, we need to continue physical therapy at home. Who's the best? And I will be honest, of by far in a way, and you and I knew each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, Gracie and Emma took gymnastics. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that I wasn't wanting to choose you. It was, I wanted to know who was the best, you know, for stroke rehabilitation. And by far and away, my nurse friend said, Becky, Pearson Physical Therapy, hands down. <laughs> and that actually made me happy because I was very comfortable with you. And so it kind of just reinforced. And I guess that's my first piece of advice to give people is start asking questions. When your life changes, you have to become an advocate like immediately. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Don't take no for an answer. Um, you're going to run into roadblocks. There's a million pages of paperwork to fill out. Uh, <laughs> just advocate, ask questions. Don't be afraid to make those phone calls. If you don't get the answers that you want right away, keep making phone calls, go above their heads. Um, be, <laughs> be the squeaky wheel, because the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So our first step was, it was almost seamless. I believe we were home, uh, we, he got home October 10th. And I wanna say we started physical therapy with you therapy with you around the 13th. I mean, it was almost a seamless transition. We gave him a couple of days at home and then you and I were in contact. You helped me. You came to the house. You helped me evaluate what I needed in the house. That helped tremendously. It helped put me at ease. Um, and just having that seamless transition made our lives easier. The home visits are so important. Um, you know, if if you can take advantage of it, you know, sometimes the therapist from whatever facility you're discharging from can do that, but being in Kearney and Broken Bow, which is like an hour 
distance for those that don't know um you know that probably wasn't really an option not really no and yeah. i wanted somebody local and just because i at the time i had i worked at the radio station and i had to be able to go back to work immediately um and we did not have caregivers in the home at that place at that point in time it took almost six months part of that was getting insurance in alignment uh, getting his disability rating, you name it, I had to get all that in place. And so he still required 24 hour care. So my life changed immediately. He had to come to work with me so that I could continue <laughs> to take care of him. Because and have an income. Yes, because I needed to keep the roof over our heads, the bills yeah. paid, the electricity, groceries, yeah, all of that. Because he couldn't work. Yeah. 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 And it, it was. Our lives changed like that. Yeah. Yeah. I know that first day at your house, you know, one of the things you have a number of stairs to get up. Yes. And that was something that was really concerning because you didn't have a ramp no nope. and but we actually were able to problem solve he did the stairs he would go down them backwards yep he it still does <laughs> <laughs> um it because of the handrail there yep. was only a handrail available on one on side. side and so when you have a stroke so his stroke affected his left side oh. and so um you know he was able to to go up them correctly right, yeah. using the right hand but then to go back down if he were to go down like you or i go down he'd have, have nothing to grab onto so we decided backwards was going to be safer and yep and to this day he that. still goes backwards <laughs> we went backwards down the stairs to get here today so yeah, yeah. It, but having you help me problem solve that was because we had borrowed a ramp and i thought okay well we'll make this work well, since it wasn't custom built to our steps, it was too steep. And I found, even though I feel like I'm a tough girl, <laughs> I could not push the wheelchair up that <laughs> ramp. <laughs> we'd go partway up it and go back down. And we'd go partway up. <laughs> I would have loved to have had a video of that. <laughs> right? I, I remember one day I called our son and I said, please come help me get the wheelchair. And it took both of us. Yeah. And I'm like, this isn't going to work. This yeah. isn't going to work for long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And as caregivers, you know, we want to, we want to do our best for our loved one, but we have to take care of ourselves. And Otherwise there's nobody to take care of. Exactly. Yeah. And that is a very hard lesson to learn because you want to give and give and give and give. But the old saying, you cannot pour from an empty cup is so very true. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to get burnout because when our loved ones require 24 hour care, it, it's a lot mm -hmm. and it's exhausting. Um, his brain changed after his stroke, uh, two and a half hours a night of sleep is about all he gets. So therefore I was trying to work a full-time job, take care of him. And I was getting about two, two and a half hours of sleep a day mm -hmm. here and there, maybe a cat nap. Mm -hmm. Um, that was the hardest one and we finally had to get to the point where I said okay I understand that you can't sleep but please just lay there quietly <laughs> I, need, I need a little bit more sleep mm -hmm. and so one of the things when you're advocating for your loved one you have to advocate for yourself too mm -hmm. and say I, I can only do so much um, and then, uh, that's when I started advocating, getting the insurance lined up so that we could have caregivers. Mm -hmm. And that was a process in itself, you know, because you want somebody, well, first off I was fighting Dwayne. I don't need nobody here 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, um, one day he had a seizure. Uh, we had tried at this point, COVID was starting to hit. I wasn't necessarily wanting to take him to work anymore. Just because in those first few weeks of COVID, nobody knew what to expect and I didn't want him exposed to anything. And he called me and he says, I don't know what happened. I blacked out, I mm -hmm. fell. And that's when he, I mean, he had major contusions. He goes full tonic clonic or what most people know as grand mal seizures. Mm -hmm. Um, he actually clamps down so hard that he will quit breathing. He turns blue. Mm -hmm. They can last. I think the longest one I've timed lasted three minutes and 37 seconds. Oh. And 
you know, that in itself was a learning curve of learning to watch the watch while you're trying to keep him from thrashing around and hitting something and getting hurt more than he already is. It's a lot. And at that point in time, his neurologist said he's 24 hour care. A, because of the seizures. B, because of the impulsivity. Uh, the impulsivity comes from not wanting to admit just how much his life had changed. Uh, he's a guy, he can do it. Um, <laughs> tough he, cowboy. Kinda. Yeah, tough cowboy. I don't need a babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he really doesn't. But at the same time, for his safety, he does. Yeah. And impulsivity can come from having a stroke, too. That yeah. Because of certain parts of the brain that become um, basically die off in the stroke. Yes. That can That can diminish their reasoning ability. Yes. And, it really can. Yeah. And he still has moments. Like I hear... The other day, the dog got out, and he decided he was going to try to get the dog back in, and he... Yeah, which I had tied the dog out. <laughs> <laughs> I had tied the dog out, so yes, the dog was out. And um, I had taken our granddaughter for a short walk in the stroller, and in that process, he went... The man who never wants to go outside <laughs> decided that he must rescue the dog that was outside. <laughs> And yeah, so yeah. impulsivity is a really big thing yeah. and and clouds their judgment. They don't have the ability to make good decisions no. based on safety. And, and it isn't that, um, it's just that part of their brain does not work the way it did. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're still, even two and a half years after the stroke, we're still fighting. I can do it. You know, and and you want them to be independent. I do. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. But I also want him to be safe. Yeah. And we started actually with a different agency at first for caregivers, and I loved the caregivers. I ended up hiring them myself because the agency I chose was like, well, we don't have any caregivers in the Broken Bow area. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. So are you going to get some? Well, if you know of anybody. So I, uh, our, his very first caregiver was actually a college student uh, whose college had closed campus for COVID. And so she was able to come and uh, take care of Dwayne, do her homework online. Because um, basically, he basically needs a companion. Um, help him run the TV. Just sit, keep him from getting bored. Um, keep him from getting depressed, that kind of thing. Um, and Emily was just amazing. She was a family friend. It worked out for her. She could continue college classes and such. Then um, at the end of the summer, uh, they were gonna open up the college campus again. So we lost her and I lined up two more caregivers. And at this point, I was like, this isn't working. I, I don't have the support I need. I'm trying to hire caregivers. I'm trying to figure out their schedules. I'm trying to do all of this. What is this agency doing besides billing our insurance? Lots and lots and lots and lots of money. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I, we switched to, at the time it was personal home services and immediately night and day difference. Uh, they did the background checks for the caregivers that I had already chose. They were going to hire caregivers. And I said, well, I've already got these caregivers. Mm -hmm. And immediately my caregivers got a raise. Um, they, if they had a question, they could call the agency and they actually had an answer that day rather than waiting four or five days. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're taking care of somebody, that's huge. Being able to have that support system. Um, and so, for the next two years, we went through personal home services. They switched. We've rebranded to Amana Care. Um, Amana is a Hebrew word that is, it stands for a lot of things. Uh, faith, loyalty, nursing, um, trustworthiness. Basically, everything is a company they wanted to stand for. And the opportunity presented itself um, through this process with Dwayne. I've been very proactive into it changed our lives so much we went to a stroke camp in august of last year we're waiting patiently for registration to open this year because <laughs> we want to go again and it became a passion of mine to be able to 
we connected with, he was able to connect with other stroke survivors and see that he's not alone. I was able to connect with other caregivers and be like, oh my gosh, they get it. They get me, they get my struggles, you know, and there were people from all ages and walks of life. We were able, he was able to connect with stroke survivors um, that were younger than him, that were older than him, um, where he was 54 at the time he had his stroke and that's really pretty young. But to even find stroke survivors that were actually younger than that helped tremendously. It was kind of life changing. And that kind of flipped a switch in me of, well, how can I help others? You know, how, how can I help other people feel like they're not alone? And it may not be stroke survivors, you know. We've been in the situation, Dwayne's dad had dementia, my grandmother had dementia, and we did the family caregiver route thing, you know. My mom and I, with my grandma, um, she would take care of her during the day. She also had some caregivers throughout the day. At nights, uh, I would pick up my grandma from my mom and grandma would spend the night at our house. Kind of the same thing. She didn't sleep a lot. And it would go so far as I'd sleep on the floor at the foot of her bed so that if she got up to wander, she literally stepped on me. <laughs> and I would wake up. Um, but there's so many of us out there and we don't it's a lonely road. You, you get so involved in the day-to-day -day caregiving that it feels like you're isolated. It feels like nobody understands. Well, there's people out there we do understand. Why do you think people uh, choose to do care in their home? I mean, there's a lot of different reasons. There is. What do you, what do you find... You know, do people feel the guilt that they have to be the caregiver and have to keep them in their home? Do you think it's financial? Do you think it's all I think of it's above? all of the above. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is, you know, like parent-wise. Well, they took care of me when I was younger. It's my job to take care of them now. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think we can provide better care at home. Mm -hmm. um, nursing homes are awesome and the people that work there you know i give them kudos because especially navigating covid and all the changes they had to go through you know i can't say enough about that nursing home staff but at the same time your loved one is going to be more comfortable in their own home yes. especially if you're fighting something like dementia or something like that because mm -hmm. as it is they get lost in their own home and you uproot them and you put them in totally new surroundings and we we found that with Dwayne's dad um his last few days was spent in a nursing home and he had wonderful staff i mean they took care of him so well uh Dwayne and i would joke and tell him that he was being treated like a rock star mm -hmm. but at the same time he was so lost i mean he i want to go home i want to and and Dwayne's mom stayed with him night and day there in the nursing home she slept in the recliner and still it just he was so lost. And I think, um, you know, if somebody's at the point where they feel overwhelmed as a caregiver and um, feel like they need support and they're debating, you know, well, maybe I do need to send my loved one to a nursing home, but I don't want to do that. Um, I, I think this is an important conversation that we're having because your company can offer support not only emotionally but yes. also in the caregiving side of things and now one of the biggest concerns is i can't put mom or dad or my husband or wife in a nursing home because i can't afford it and so your company helps people navigate the financial side of things as we well, do and um we work with medicaid ad waiver um we are working on the dd waiver side of thing for developmental disabilities um we also work through the va um, there's assistance through the va for home care services we can do private pay. Um, certain long-term care insurance companies will reimburse families for home care rather than nursing home care. Um, there's a variety of options out there and we help navigate that billing issue. Um, plus, we're a listening ear, you know. We, we understand what it's like trying to do the best that you possibly can for your loved one. And it became 
a passion of mine to the point where I actually joined Monicare to help families like mine. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's not the cer certain same situations. Maybe it's not a stroke. Maybe it's dementia. We can do everything from homemaking skills, you know, keep the house clean, do the laundry, change the bedding, clean the bathrooms, clean the kitchen, meal prep, uh, you know, fix some meals, make sure that your loved one eats, uh, put away the meals in the refrigerator, um, help them get dressed, bathing assistance, uh, the list goes on and on. We also provide transportation. Let's say that they want to go to Prairie Pioneer Center here in Broken Bow for lunch. Our caregivers can give them rides to and from there. Our caregivers can also run errands for them. Let's say you don't want them out in the public. Maybe they are immune compromised. Our caregivers can go run the errands and get the groceries for them. Um, they want to go to church every week. Our caregivers can get them there. We are a faith-based company, which means we want to be able to keep our clients connected with their community, their faith. And so sometimes that means just getting them to church. Um, yeah, it, we, we try to take care of the whole person. It's kind of a 360 care approach. It's not just their physical needs that we're trying to take care of, but also their emotional needs and psychological needs. We try, we try to fill those gaps in so that you're not caring for your loved one all by yourself. That's great. And I think, you know, that's the thing, like caregivers get so overwhelmed um, that having somebody that they can rely on that is dependable yes. and cares um, has got to be a huge relief uh, in their mind. Well, in Dwayne's situation, sometimes the only outside stimulation he gets is coming to physical therapy and seeing you and the office girls and Melissa and Sarah and um, you've made it very easy for us. I mean, Dwayne's been your patient for on and off almost two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And by on and off, it's, you know, fighting with the insurance companies. And I can't say enough about your staff. They have helped me every step of the way. I may have greased the wheels a couple of times by nagging the neurologist, mm -hmm. but your staff has went above and beyond to keep him in physical therapy. And I feel that that's very important. And as you know, our caregivers have brought him to physical therapy yeah. when I've yeah. been unable to. And I just want you to know that I will forever be a proponent for Pearson Physical Therapy because you have helped us so very much. and. Like I said, you've helped me navigate the insurance situation. So I thank you. Yay, thank you. I think that's a good, good spot to stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Awesome. Thank you very much. Well, I think you. that'll get a lot of information for people. I appreciate that.